Hi, I'm Greg Marcus. I'm the pastor of Improvide Christian Center, and this is our Sunday morning service via the internet. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and thank you so much for being part of it. Whenever you're watching this, thank you for participating in this service with us, for uh, studying it, receiving the teaching, and and hopefully uh, growing by the things that we're teaching here, by the Bible teaching that we're doing here in these uh, TV shows. Thank you, thank you so much for being part of that with us. Anyway, right now we're on the subject of the prayer of decreeing. And we went over here to John chapter 14, verse 12, where Jesus is teaching his disciples to decree. John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus is teaching his disciples to decree. And he says this in verse 12, John chapter 14, verse 12, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And the context there is, of course, of Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. You know, we immediately read that. We want to make excuses. No, that can't mean that, Greg. Surely Jesus couldn't have meant that. <laughs> Surely Jesus could not have meant that we're supposed to do the works that he's doing. Well, that's why he started off with very truly, I tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Very truly. He says, yeah, I better throw in a very truly here so they can know I really mean this. Hallelujah. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. They will do even greater things than they, because I am going to the Father. Hallelujah. 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 And I think we missed that. I am going to the Father. I'm going to the Father. We missed this whole story of Jesus uh, being exalted, of Jesus being the king. Uh, we looked at it this way. I said that, what does he mean by believe in me? Whoever believes in me will do these works. What are we supposed to believe about Jesus? That he existed? That he, you know, the the facts of his life? Hallelujah. No, we're supposed to believe like the Bible people believed, like the disciples and the apostles believed, that Jesus is the Messiah. Hallelujah. Not he just was the Messiah, but that Jesus is the Messiah. And we looked at the story in Matthew chapter 16 when uh, Jesus asked his, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Hallelujah. We looked at several other examples, but one that I like in John chapter 11, where he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. And and he's telling, in effect, he's telling Lazarus, his sister, Martha, if you believe in me, you don't have to wait for the resurrection from the dead. I am the resurrection from the dead. I can raise the dead, is what he's telling her. And he says, do you believe this? He says, I believe you are the Messiah. Uh, the Son of God who is to come into the world. Hallelujah. So they believed he was the Messiah. His disciples believed he was the Messiah. What does that mean that he was? It meant he was the great king, the great deliverer. Remember when the uh, the three wise men came to look for Jesus? What did they? Where is the king of Israel? Hallelujah. That's what they, they were looking for, the king. Hallelujah. Jesus is a king. Jesus is an exalted one. Watch, turn over to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, and this is a story of when Peter and uh, John went into the temple and they healed this man who was lame from his mother's womb and it caused a great hubbub. People were wondering, how did you do this? How did this amazing thing happen? Everybody knew him. He was a old, you know, he was a grown up and he'd been laid there for a long, long time to beg for his living. And now he's healed. He's walking around, leaping and jumping and praising God, the Bible says. Hallelujah. And then Peter says this. He says, verse 13, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant. What does he mean he glorified? He rubbed some glory on him? He has glorified his servant Jesus. That's the part we're missing. Jesus says, whoever believes in me, what did they believe? They believed he was the Messiah. They believed he was the glorified one. Hallelujah. They believe he was the exalted one. They believe he was the one with all authority in heaven and earth. They believe, I like to put it, they believed he was the great king. 
Hallelujah. That's what we're supposed to believe about Jesus. But most Christians are kind of stopped. You know, well, Jesus died on the cross. You know, there are even some Christians who say, oh, well, it, whether Jesus rose from the dead or not is not. No, you're missing the whole picture. Jesus didn't just die on the cross. Hallelujah. He rose from the dead. He was conquering. He was not the victim on that cross. He was the victorious one. He was wasn't the martyr on that cross. He was the triumphant one. The death did not hold him. Satan couldn't hold him. Death couldn't. He triumphed over death. And in triumphing over death, he triumphed over death for all of us. Hallelujah. So that Paul puts it in Romans chapter 1, he says this. He says, through the resurrection from the dead, he has been declared the Son of God with power. Hallelujah. Because he rose from the dead, because he conquered death, because death could not hold him, because he overcame death. Hallelujah. That identifies him as the Messiah, as the anointed one, as the great king, as the exalted one. Look over here. <laughs> Go back to Acts chapter 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And look where it says here, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified. Why did he glorify him? When did this glorifying take place? After he died, after he rose, he was glorified. Hallelujah. The God of our Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus. How did he glorify him? By uh, uh, setting him at his right hand in the place of kingship, in the place of reigning. Jesus is the great king. Jesus is the great king. Hallelujah. 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 Let's get down to verse 16. And Peter, Peter had said earlier, he he said, no, it was not. Watch, look in verse 12. He says, when Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? So he's saying, it wasn't me. It's not because I'm St. Peter. Hallelujah. It is not because I'm St. Peter that this man was able to walk. It is not because I'm St. Peter that this man was able to walk. It is not because I'm St. Peter that I was able to do the works of Jesus and make this man walk. It is not because I am so holy and so wonderful and I'm a great saint of God that this man is able to walk. That's what he's saying. Hallelujah that he was able to do the works of Jesus, not because he was St. Peter, the God of Abraham. He says here, when Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. That's why he's able to make him to walk. Because the God of our Father has glorified his servant Jesus. How did he glorify him? By giving him all authority in heaven and earth. By seating him at his right hand in the heavenly places. In the place of authority over the universe. Jesus is king of the universe. Jesus, that's what it means that he glorified. He made him king of the universe. He made him king of the universe. That's what Peter means by he has glorified hallelujah, has glorified his servant Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now skip down to verse 16. Hallelujah. And so he's saying, it wasn't me, it wasn't because I'm St. Peter's, because I'm so wonderful, because I'm so holy, because I'm so full of faith, because I'm so, no. Hallelujah. It wasn't anything to do with Peter. Hallelujah. He tells them this in verse 16, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him as you can all see. Faith in what? 
Whoever believes in me will do the works of faith in what about you? That he is the glorified one, that he is the exalted one, that he has been given all authority in heaven and in earth. Can you see that if you have faith in the fact that Jesus is the great king, that he is the king over the universe, that he is the king over all powers and authorities and mights and dominion, hallelujah, that at his word, everything in the universe must obey, hallelujah, must bow its knee, must obey at his name. Why? Because he has authority in heaven and in earth. He is the king of the universe. He is the great king, the great king, the great king has come, the great Messiah has come. Hallelujah! 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 And it is by faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Faith in the name of Jesus. I remember I used to read that and I would say to myself, oh God, what does it mean to have faith in the name of Jesus? What? I, I don't, I would like to have faith in the name of Jesus. Peter here clearly says it's by faith in the name of Jesus that the man was made whole, that he was, I want to be able to pray for people and then be healed. Hallelujah. How do I get some of that? What does it mean to have faith? How do I get some of this faith in the name of Jesus? What does that even mean? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said this. He said, if you'll teach people about the exaltation of Jesus, they will have faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you will teach people about the exaltation of Jesus, they will have faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Hebrew, the idea of name, in Hebrew, the, the word for, the Hebrew word for name is Shem. Hallelujah. Sometimes you'll hear uh, Orthodox Jewish people, they don't like to pronounce the name of God or they don't even like to say Lord or whatever. And they'll call God Hashem. Hashem, which means the name. They call him the name. That's, that's how they refer to God, the name. In other words, his name is so, so holy, they don't want to mention it, so they call it the name. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. But in Hebrew, a name represents the person. It's not just the thing we call them, but their name contains their uh, glory, their honor, their uh, power, their ability. It represents all of them. Hallelujah. Their reputation. Hallelujah. When we, when in Hebrew they talk about the name, they mean his reputation, who he is, what he can do, all those. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man was made strong. By faith in the name of Jesus. And God told me, if you'll teach people about the exaltation of, of Jesus, they will have faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because the name of Jesus, part of Jesus' reputation, hallelujah, the part of Jesus' reputation that's responsible for healing this man is that he's the glorified one, that he's the exalted one, that he is the great king, that he has all authority in heaven and earth, that he is, I like to put it this way, that he is the king over the universe, hallelujah, that he can command anything in the universe and anything, everything in the universe must obey because he is king over over the universe. Woohoo! Hallelujah. Can you imagine that if you have faith in the name of Jesus like that? That's what the Holy Spirit told me. Teach them about the exaltation of Jesus. They'll have faith. I want to know what does it mean to have faith in the name of Jesus? Teach them about the exaltation of Jesus. They'll have faith in the name of Jesus. So that's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to teach you about the Jesus, the great King. Jesus is the great king. Jesus is the Messiah. He was the Messiah. He is the Messiah. What's the Messiah? A king. He is the great king. He is the anointed one. Hallelujah. 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 And can you see how you, if you have faith, if you have faith that he is the great king, then your faith in his name, if you have faith that he uh, is the king over the universe, if you have faith that he can command anything, anything, and it must happen. It must happen. If you have faith that Jesus can command it, and it must happen. Hallelujah. If you have faith in, in that Jesus, the Jesus who is the king, hallelujah, who, who can command anything, and, and it must happen. Woo! Hallelujah.
Yeah, how, can you see how that kind of faith in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and what that name represents, how I'm here in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked, hallelujah. Can you see how faith in that Jesus, how faith in, in that name of Jesus, hallelujah, how, is the faith he's taught me, Who, whoever believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works in these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we began looking at those things, and I want to show you something else about this. I'm just teaching you about the exaltation of Jesus right now. I want you to see that he is the exalted one, that he is the great king. And there's a lot more of this, but I'm just going to give you a brief sort of roundup of the thing. Hallelujah. But we began to look at, at the fact that Jesus is a king. Jesus is a triumphant one. Jesus is a victorious king. Hallelujah. He has delivered mankind from the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch, turn back to John chapter 12 for just a second. I want you to see that Jesus is the triumphant one. He's not just the, the guy, some people... Uh, uh, leave Jesus dying on the cross. Oh, well, yes, I accept Jesus' sacrifice. Hallelujah. No. He didn't just, if Jesus just died on the cross, he'd just be somebody else who died on the cross. He would not be the one who is declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 1, verse 4. Hallelujah. Look at here. He had a mission. Look here in John chapter uh, 12. And, and look at verse uh, 30. And it says, that Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Verse 31, now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. When is the prince of this world going to be driven out? And I, when I am lifted up from the earth. Hallelujah. We read that and we think, you know, Jesus dying on the cross. But that word, it could really be translated exalted. Hallelujah. In fact, here there's a note. I'm reading from the NIV, and there it has a little a note, and it says, number seven, the Greek for lifted up also means exalted. Hallelujah. So some Bibles translate it that way. And it says this, and I, when I am exalted up from the earth, he's not talking about dying on the cross. Hallelujah, like people like to interpret this. He's talking about being exalted to the right hand of God. He's talking about being made the king. That's how he's going to drive the prince of this world out. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I, when I am exalted up from the earth, will draw, and hear it, it says, we'll draw all people to myself, but literally people is not in there. Hallelujah. And I, when I am exalted up from the earth, will draw all to myself. What's he going to draw? What all is he going to draw to himself? Hallelujah. He's going to draw all the power. Satan was the prince of this world. Hallelujah. And now Jesus, what's happening to Jesus? He, he's going to be crucified. This is like right before he's going to be crucified. He's going to die. He's going to die there on the cross. He's going to be buried. Hallelujah. He's going to stay buried for a while. And then he's going to rise from the dead. Woo! Hallelujah. And then what? He's going to be exalted to the right hand of God. Hallelujah. 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 And when he does, now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. Who is the prince of this world? It's not talking about Caesar. It's not talking about King Herod. It's not talking about the mayor of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. There's no, no, he's talking about the, the ruler of the darkness of this world. Hallelujah. 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 So all I want you to see is that Jesus didn't just stop there on the cross. Some people left Jesus on the cross, but the Bible doesn't leave Jesus on the cross. The Bible sees Jesus resurrected. Hallelujah, what a miracle. He conquered death. He rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. And as a result of that triumph, what happens? He is glorified. He's exalted. He's seated at God's right hand. He's made the king of the universe. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go back to Ephesians. We've been looking at Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, I've been showing you that Jesus is exalted. Like, you know, the Holy Spirit, I believe, told me, teach people about the exaltation of Jesus, and they'll have faith in the name of Jesus. Why? Because then they'll know what that name represents. What does it represent? It represents the great king. That name of Jesus represents the great king. Hallelujah. That name of Jesus represents the one who is king over the universe. That name of Jesus represents the glorified one. That name of Jesus represents the exalted one. Hallelujah. That name of Jesus represents the triumphant one over death. Hallelujah. 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 And that's how you have faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Look here. And so I've been showing you that Jesus is a king by showing you pictures the Bible paints for us of him being sitting on a throne. And this is one of them, but I want to show you something different today. Hallelujah. I want to show you that Jesus receives all authority in heaven and in earth. Jesus is exalted. Jesus becomes the king. Jesus has everything put beneath him. And then he immediately, this is the way Papa Hagen would put it, and he immediately delegates that authority to his disciples. Hallelujah. Jesus rises from the dead. Hallelujah. And proves that he is the Messiah. Hallelujah. That he is the son of God with power and he's exalted to the right. Woo! End of God. And all enemies are put under his feet. Hallelujah. He's given all authority in heaven and earth and he immediately delegates that authority to his disciples. That's supposed to be us. Look, and you can see that in this verse. And here he's talking, Paul is talking about how the power that God exerted when he, in verse 20, the power that God exerted when we became Christians, on us when we became Christians, is the same as the mighty strength. Verse 20, he exerted, God exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. So where was Jesus seated? Far above. This is, he seated him at his right hand. This is the right hand of God. He seated Jesus at God's right hand. He said, you're my right hand man, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, by God, seating him at his right hand what's really happening is Jesus is being made king of the universe and you can tell that from what happens next hallelujah it said he exerted when he raised Christ from the, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm far above all rule all authority all power all dominion every name that is invoked hallelujah that's where he's seated far above He's seated far above all these reigning rulers. Remember, and now is the time for Satan. He'll be driven out of this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The prince of this world will be cast out. That, he's above all those. He's above all those principalities and powers, those demon forces that, that are trying to impose their will upon mankind. Those things that over in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Peter calls Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. That's He's above all those who cause oppression, that demonic oppression on people. People, that sickness and disease, that satanic oppression, that poverty, that lack, that destruction in their families, those, those demons that were oppressing people of the devil, the, Jesus, the ones that over in Acts chapter 26, Jesus tells Paul to turn people from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. That power of Satan that Jesus is telling Paul about to turn to loose people from the power, from the reign, from the oppression, from the kingship of Satan unto God. That's who he's been put above. Those guys, that Satan, that devil, those demonic forces, not human forces, what is he? He's the king of the universe. He doesn't care about being king of the United States. He's the king of the universe. 
He doesn't care about being king of the United States. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power, dominion, every name that is invoked. But look at what is it, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Some people say, well, yes, that'll happen in, in the end days, in the end times, when Jesus returns in the last days, when Jesus returns to, after the resurrection, you know, that will happen. No, but he's saying, no, no, it's not only, I, it says here, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And I like to read that in reverse because that's not how we believe it. Hallelujah. But not only in the age to come, but also in the present age. Not only in the age to come, but also in the present age. Not only in the age to come, but also in the present age. Not only in the age to come, but also in the present age. Not only in the age to come, but all, you can see that's what he means. He says, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Not only what? that he has been seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, every name that is invoked, not only in the age to come, but also in the present age. This stuff is working now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So you can see Jesus is the great king. He's been exalted. He's been put above all principality and power and might and dominions, the way the King James Version puts it. And he's not talking about human dominions and human principalities. He's talking about spiritual principalities. Watch, turn over to Ephesians chapter 6. We looked at this for a second a couple of days ago. Hallelujah. And look at verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6 10 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the, his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's king. Whose power are we supposed to be using for this? Yeah, put on your big power. Get your six guns, Greg. Get your automatic rifles. Yeah, prepare. Prepare for the siege. <laughs> prepare. For, no, not that kind of rinky-dink human power. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Which Lord? Hallelujah. Jesus. What mighty power does he have? He's been seated far above. All principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named. We're supposed to be strong in his power. We're supposed to be strong in that seated far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named. Not only in the age to come, but also in this age power. We're supposed to be strong in that power. Hallelujah. We're supposed to be strong in the power of the exalted one. We're supposed to be strong in the power of the great king. We're supposed to be strong in the power of the great Messiah who has come. Hallelujah. What are we supposed to do with this strong power? Hallelujah. Sit around and work our remote control on the television set. Hallelujah. Like one guy like to say, you know, just sit around on our couch playing with the remote control. What are we supposed to do with this great power? Be strong. Finally be strong in the Lord in his mighty power. What are we supposed to do with his mighty power? Just sit around reading the internet gossip? Hallelujah! He tells us what we're put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against whose scheme? The devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Those words that he's using there are the same words he used in chapter one. He's seated in far above all principality and power, might and dominion, every name that is named. Now he says about those, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So those are not flesh and blood things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. So go back to Ephesians chapter one real quick. I'm almost out of time. Hallelujah. So what is the glorification of Jesus? What is the exaltation of Jesus? The Holy Spirit will teach people about this. This is the exaltation of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the exaltation of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says that, uh, Paul says that that power 
that God uses on us when we become Christians is the same, is the way it puts it here in the NIV, which is a very good translation. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. And what else? Did he, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, every name that is evoked. Not human rules. Who cares? He's talking about the demon forces that work behind those humans. He talks about, he's talking about those demon forces that work behind the scenes, causing strifes and wars and spreading sickness and disease. Hallelujah! Causing confusion, causing people's minds to become stupid. Hallelujah. So they risk the lives of their families on some stupid internet gossip. Hallelujah. Those demonic forces. Yeah, those demonic forces. That's the ones Jesus has been seated above. That's the ones he's been, uh, they have been put under him. That's, look what it says. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all, far above, all far above, far above what? All these demon forces, all these non-material forces that are causing this havoc in the world. Far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, not only in the age to come, but also in the present age. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you see that? The exalted one, the exalted one, hallelujah. Verse 22, look at, he had just finished saying, this makes no sense. He had just finished said, far above all rule, authority, power, all these things. He had seated Jesus far above all the, and now he adds this, and we assume he's still talking in the same context, and God placed all things under his feet. Well, he already told us he placed him far above. Seated him in his right hand in the heavenlies, far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, every name that is invoked, not only in the age to come, but also in the present age. And God placed all things under his feet because he's telling us something different here. He's adding to it. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus receives authority in heaven and on earth and immediately delegates that authority to us. We are the feet. We are the feet. Let me, let me retranslate this for you a little bit. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him, it says here in most translations. But that word him can also be translated the same. Hallelujah. And I think it's not referring back to, to Jesus, his, but it's referring back to the feet. Hallelujah. Who are the feet of Jesus? Who are these feet of Jesus? And God placed all things under his feet and appointed the same, the feet, to be head over everything. And then it says here, everything for the church, but for is not in there, it just says the church. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed the same head over everything, the church. The church are the feet. The church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. That's why he can tell us, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Because we are the feet. Hallelujah. We are the feet. And as the feet, he's appointed us head over everything. Hallelujah. Or I like to read it this way. Look. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed the same to be head over everything. The church, which is his body, we're the body. The fullness of him. We are the fullness of Jesus. Do you understand what that means? Without the church, without us Christians, without us being strong in the Lord, in the power of his might, without us having faith in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus is not full. He is not complete. We, we, the faithful ones, the faith in Jesus' name ones, hallelujah, hallelujah, are the fullness of him. We're the ones, we're the feet, we're the body, hallelujah. He's been seated, he's been made great king of the universe, and now he's saying to us, go, go, go. Whoever believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Hallelujah. What does I go unto my Father mean? Woo, exalted, because I go unto my Father, 
And whatever you decree in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you decree anything in my name, I will do it. Can you see why that works? Because the decree in the name of Jesus is the decree in the name of the great King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Unfortunately, I didn't even get close to finish, but I'm out of time. Listen, if you enjoyed this message, please give us a like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell and leave us a good comment. Share it with your friends if you think it'll help them. Holla, if you have any friends, you could do us the favor of sharing it with them so we can spread this message. Hallelujah. Also, if you want to learn more or if you want to contribute to this ministry to keep this teaching, Bible teaching ministry going, you can do so on our website. Hallelujah. If you click the Feed the Ox button on our website, you'll be able to give a contribution through PayPal. Thank you, thank you so much for being part of this ministry with us, for helping us continue to do this, for supporting us while we're doing this, while we are doing this Bible teaching ministry. We thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.